Despite the rise and rise of the SUV, the C-Class continues to be Mercedes' best-selling international model. No pressure then for this fifth-generation W206 series version, which fully embraces various forms of engine electrification and brings more than a dash of S-Class luxury to this important segment. For anyone thinking of a German mid-sized premium badged Saluna estate, the options have always been pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a dynamic drive of a BMW 3 Series, the uber-cool technology of an Audi A4, or the aspirational image of a Mercedes C-Class. That's how it's traditionally been in this segment, but with this more aspirational Mark V W206 Series C-Class design, the Stuttgart maker aims to significantly broaden this model line's appeal. Its significance can hardly be overstated. Today, one in every five cars the brand sells is a C of some description, and many will tell you that it's really with this model, not with the company's smaller front-driven offerings, that Mercedes ownership really starts. Over 8.6 million C-classes have been sold since the original first-generation W202 series version was launched in 93, with sleeker W203 and W204 second and third generation designs following in 2000 and 2007, before this current model's predecessor, the W205 series fourth-generation car, arrived in 2014. That Mark IV design sold well, helped by a far-reaching update in 2018, with over 2.5 million cars delivered in over 120 countries before this fifth-generation W206 series design arrived in mid-2021. Coupe and Cabriolet C-Class body styles provide a fashionable twist on this model line's successful formula, but here our focus is on the core saloon and estate variants that most customers will want. These days, the C-Class doesn't have to be the cheapest saloon Mercedes makes. That role in the range is now occupied by a four-door version of the front-driven A-Class. So there's a bit more scope for this car to include pricier technology. Now, much of this is borrowed from the latest S-Class limo, including the updated MRA, uh, Mercedes rear architecture platform, and the opulent screen-centered interior. All of which is just as well because this new era C-Class faces more competition from more different quarters today than it ever has before. Not only from other class favourites, but also from SUVs and EVs, including those in Mercedes-Benz's own G and EQ series product lineups. So, can this C respond to the challenge and retain its appeal well into this century's third decade? Or... Does this swoopy Mark V model represent the last of a traditional breed of mid-sized saloon and estate models? Cars fueled predominantly from pumps rather than plugs. We'll see. What's certain is that with this fifth generation design, Mercedes wants to offer more, a sharper drive to tempt BMW folk, and a big enough step forward in technology and efficiency to make a potential Audi customer think again. Now we've been promised these sorts of advancements before with previous C-Class models, but there are stronger grounds for Mercedes' claim this time around. Uh, the aim being to redefine what luxury means in this segment. Sounds promising. So has Mercedes delivered on this brief? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive road test review, the car and driving road test, of course, to find out. There are some big engineering changes here, primarily the standardization of four-cylinder engines right across the range, all of them in some way electrified, uh, and the fitment of a heavily revised version of Mercedes MRA module platform with borrowed S-Class tech. Uh, plus, there's also a redesigned multi-link suspension setup, uh, plug-in hybrids with double the EV driving range, and more autonomous drive kit. Yet, despite all this, uh, for the first few miles in your test drive, you might also think that much is also very familiar from the usual rear-wheel drive mid-sized Mercedes formula. Uh, sufficient power, a smooth shifting automatic gearbox, and secure, predictable control responses. 
Dig a little deeper though on the nearest twisting secondary road and the differences that Mercedes has made here start to become more evident. Uh, the car feels lighter and more agile than before, despite the fact that it still weighs around 1.7 tonnes. The steering is just that bit more accurate. Uh, the grip is a bit more tenacious. Is it BMW 3 Series like? Uh, well, no, not quite. But in terms of handling feedback, this C has been lifted well clear of what used to be its most dynamically comparable rival, the Audi A4. Uh, perhaps a little carried away by this, the UK importer has decided that all uh, C-Class variants sold here should ride on lowered suspension and nearly all of them get the firm sports suspension setup, which is mandatory with the various AMG line trim levels. Uh, this gives you a level of body control through the turns that long-time C-Class owners will find quite eye-opening. Overall though, the sport suspension fitment is somewhat unfortunate because in this form, uh, particularly with larger wheels, the car never really settles down on a really bumpy road and it's rather more perturbed by potholes and speed humps than you'd hope, despite its standard so-called selective damping system. Uh, that's a passive setup which uh, supposedly allows the springs to react differently to low and high frequency inputs. Uh, that is disappointing because uh, reports from Continental spec models which can be had with the optional adaptive damping system which isn't available here uh, indicate that this W206 series design's redesigned suspension setup is actually very capable indeed. It comprises a four-link axle at the front and a multi-link axle at the rear mounted to the subframe. There's no rear air suspension package for top variants this time around either. And uh, talking of things that you can't have, the rear axle steering system, which has been developed for this uh, fifth generation model, is another thing that dedicated option list box tickers will have to do without, in the UK anyway. This is an all-wheel steering system which delivers a smaller turning circle at lower speeds and enhanced stability at higher speeds. And that's something that would have been a useful, unique selling point in the class for our market. What you might have expected to be a must-have option for this car, four-wheel drive, uh, given the success of Audi's Quattro and BMW's X-Drive systems in this segment, uh, was also lacking from the mainstream C-Class lineup from launch. Now we referenced the four cylinder powertrains earlier, all the conventional units driving the rear wheels via a nine speed automatic gearbox and now embellished with 48 volt mild hybrid technology to provide a bit of extra electrical boost in the mid range using energy uh, harvested at a cruise and under braking. Uh, base uh, C180 variants and C200 variants use the relatively humble 1.5 litre petrol unit which Mercedes has developed with Renault, uh, respectively in 170 horsepower and 204 horsepower states of tune. In C200 form, uh, this little lump offers a decent 300 newton meters of torque. That's enough pulling power to enable that variant to sprint from standstill to 62 in 7.3 seconds on the way to 153 miles an hour. Torque, by the way, is one of the things that you can graphically monitor via a display in the engine section of the center screen, which also shows power and boost pressure at any given time. If you need more from a petrol power plant, uh, then there's a larger, quieter 2-litre engine offered with two C-Class variants, the C300 and the C300e, uh, both of which sprint to 62 in around 6 seconds and top out just shy of 155 miles an hour. The C300 model is the conventional one, uh, offering 258 HP and 400 newton meters of torque. The C300e is a plug-in hybrid, offering 313 horsepower and 550 newton meters. That comes courtesy of uh, the combination of a detuned version of the same 2-litre engine and a 129 horsepower electric motor, the latter powered by a much larger battery pack than before uh, in the last C-Class PHEV. It's now 25 kilowatt hours in size and that's enough to nearly double that uh, plug-in model's EV driving range to as much as 62 miles at speeds of up to 87 miles an hour. Various brake regeneration settings allow you to alter how much energy is recuperated from slowing and braking, uh, so there's some additional satisfaction to be had from seeing how much range you can preserve or add on to each journey. Mercedes hasn't been able to bring itself to ditch diesel, it's still a bit early for that in this segment, but it has this time around limited itself to a single unit, uh, the previous model's OM654 series 2 litre power plant. 
Most will want the C220D, which uses that engine in 200 horsepower guys, in which form uh, 62 miles an hour is dispatched in 7.3 seconds on the way to 152 miles an hour. Here though, we've chosen to try the C300D, a variant which sees this engine offered in uprated 265 horsepower form, which improves those figures to 5.7 seconds and 155 miles an hour, plus torque jumps by another 25% to 550 newton meters. Now the brand has developed a C300DE plug-in model using the same engine, but at the time of this test, uh, they hadn't announced whether that variant would be sold here. Talking of high power, we'll briefly touch on the other headlining C-Class variant, the top Mercedes-AMG C63, which this time around ditches the previous throaty V8 for a hybrid e-performance powertrain, an electrified version of the M139 turbo four-cylinder two-litre unit used by the A45 hot hatch. There's more power here though, uh, produced via a combination of this power plant's 449 horsepower and a further 203 HP uh, from an e-motor, all of that delivering an aggregate output of over 600 horsepower. So it's just as well that a unique twin power rear axle has been developed to deploy that power, along with of course uh, 4Matic plus four-wheel drive, although you can disconnect that to activate a tail-out drift mode. This new era C63 is a plug-in too, which uh, has around 40 miles of EV range. Intriguing. Our focus here though is on the mainstream range, which as mentioned earlier on, has to be had with nine speed automatic transmission. Uh, that's regardless of the engine you choose. Uh, generally, this 9G Tronic Plus box is excellent. It behaves just as a Mercedes Auto should, delivering smooth slurred shifts and having an uncanny ability to almost always be in the right gear. Uh, there are steering wheel paddles, but unless you're absolutely determined to play Lewis Hamilton, it's really much more relaxing to let the smooth shifting software select ratios for you, especially as this gearbox uh, does rather thump into the next gear when you accelerate hard. Uh, the responsiveness of the various ratio changes, as well as throttle response, can be changed by the usual uh, Mercedes Dynamic Select Driving Mode system, uh, which, as before, has four settings. Uh, there's Comfort, Eco, Sport, and Individual. The latter allows the driver to tailor the settings individually. Of course, like any Mercedes, this one is most in its element on the highway. Uh, refinement is predictably exemplary, uh, to the point where, at a cruise, you'd be really hard-pressed to know whether a petrol or a diesel unit lay ahead of you. It's so good, in fact, uh, that the lack of the kind of a creamy six-cylinder engine option you could have in a Rival 3 Series becomes a moot point. Even if a bigger engine did lie under that fluted bonnet, you probably wouldn't be able to identify what it was anyway. With the extra cost driving assistance package plus option fitted, you can also introduce an element of autonomous driving into longer trips. That's courtesy of an active distance assist distronic feature, which uh, basically drives for you at a cruise. And uh, an included uh, route-based speed adaptation system uh, uses GPS data to automatically adapt your speed before curves, roundabouts, uh, junctions and toll roads. Mid and high spec models come as standard with a digital light feature for the headlights too. It's very clever. It projects guidelines, symbols and animations onto the road in front of you as you drive. It's all very S-Class like, which of course is exactly what buyers of this car will be looking for. So what do you think? This could only be a small Mercedes. There's plenty of E-Class in the genes of this fifth generation W206 series design and Q's two from the even larger S-Class sedan. Here we're focusing on the saloon and estate C-Class variants that most will want, both deceptively curvy and both significantly larger than before. A previous owner will notice that from the side, this saloon model's 65 millimetres longer than before, and perhaps more significantly, it's 42 millimetres longer than a competing BMW 3 Series. That's taken it well clear of Mercedes 
comparably priced model in the segment, the CLA four-door, which is 63 millimeters shorter. While we're talking length stats, rather counterintuitively, the estate body style is actually shorter too, by quite a lot, 68 millimeters. Either way, there's a bit more pavement presence this time around, thanks to a slightly sleeker roof line, which has reduced height by nine mils. The car sits lower too, especially in UK guys, where all models have suspension lowered by 15 millimeters. And it's cleanly sculpted with this single shoulder line flowing beneath the glass area and a lower crease flowing upwards through the doors. Wheel sizes range from 17 inch rims to the 19 inch alloys we have here. It's very E-Class like at the front. It's characterized as usual by the brand's Hallmark radiator grille, which will look quite different and much less arresting if you attempt to save an insignificant amount and opt for entry level sport trim. The various AMG line models get as here, these twinkling chrome pins around the central three pointed star and a much more dynamic looking AMG lower bumper, air intake and lower splitter design. The LED high performance headlights are interesting, or at least they are on the plusher models anyway, where, as in this case, the beams come fitted with the brand's latest digital light technology, which enables them to project warning signs as well as light onto the road ahead. The rear gets an uplift with the AMG line trim levels too. The bumper gains these high gloss chrome elements, uh, a more potent design and more prominent exhaust apertures too, which might make folk think that you've stretched up to one of the sportier Mercedes AMG variants. Uh, the slim tail lights, which emphasize the body's 13 millimeters of extra width are of the LED variety of course. And with the saloon, they have a two piece design for the first time. Just as important, of course, is what you can't see, the Mercedes MRA2 uh, rear wheel drive modular platform. That's a modified version of the structure also used by the current S-Class. Strong and stiff, it makes extensive use of aluminium, which helps to counter some of the extra weight from the electrified powertrains. All of this, though, is merely the prelude to the thing that Mercedes thinks will really sell you this car, the cabin. Let's take a look. Well, no car in this class has ever felt quite so upmarket as this. It really does feel like the luxurious cabin of a larger car, specifically the S-Class, which uses much the same kind of twin screen arrangement. For the first time in a C-Class, the instrumentation is all fully digital, and at night you'll be struck by how much of this interior is illuminated by trendy thin strips of light. Get settled in, another freshly evolved detail start to present themselves. The three squarical jet engine style circuit events just above the infotainment monitor. The leather stitched uh, steering wheel here with its unusual twin bar horizontal spokes and the cleverly sculpted door cards which have unusual concave shaping, intricate speaker grills and floating style silver trimmed handle panels. It all makes the cabins that you get in competitor models feel very last generation. We're not sure that the quality is quite as bulletproof as it is in an A4 or even a 3 Series. Perhaps our memories of Mercedes models at the end of the last century are rose tinted, but we can't help feeling that the early first generation C had a feeling of build integrity that Mercedes hasn't quite replicated since at any of the three global factories where this current model is made. Bremen in Germany, East London in South Africa and Beijing in China. Quite a lot of the cabin fittings don't feel as good to use as they look, uh, the various vents for example, but you might not care about that because the ergonomics here are brilliant and it all looks so good. Especially this big 11.9 inch central multimedia colour display around which the cabin architecture is based. It's in Tesla style portrait format and it's angled steeply at about 45 degrees, which can sometimes attract unwelcome reflections, but the graphics are crisp and sophisticated looking, and the screen size means that plenty of detail can be displayed, for example, when you're viewing maps. It's also nicely laid out with small buttons for commonly accessed features, like driving modes, the parking camera, car info, and audio volume. They're arranged across the monitor's bottom edge. Press the screen's home icon and the series of icons for the key functions appear and they're easy to quickly scroll through to access navigation, phone, radio, media, uh, apps, store, comfort, settings and info. 
Pressing any of the icons changes the display accordingly, but a thoughtful piece of design is that each icon has the two most commonly used commands beneath it. For example, below the navigation icon are virtual buttons for end journey or set home as destination, and that makes it possible to do either of those things without having to access the navigation screen. Less useful is the fact that the climate control is now operated by virtual buttons in the lower section of the display. Even though they're always in the same position, it takes more focus than pressing a physical button or turning a real dial. Uh, there's also no real haptic feedback, so it's difficult to tell if you've pressed a particular function or not. All of which is a further incentive to master the intuitive Hey Mercedes voice command functionality by which you can control almost anything, although, like all such systems, it's not very difficult to catch it out. Uh, once you've set things to your liking and you've saved your profile, holding your finger to the fingerprint sensor at the base of the monitor will log you on and will change the car to your settings. For example, it'll pair your phone, it'll alter the seats and mirrors to your positions, and it'll remember your favorite radio stations, your most recent destinations, uh, behavior-based predictions, business calendar entries and emails. This whole setup runs the second generation version of the brand's MBUX infotainment system and that means that media connectivity has taken a big step forward. So there are over-the-air updates and live streaming services so that owners can link accounts to services like Spotify and access them in the car. You can even link up to and control domestic equipment thanks to the smart home function. So before you reach home, you could potentially open the gates, activate the room lights and turn up the heating. I mean, conceivably, you could even put the oven on, assuming, of course, that your dinner's already in it. With all of this sophistication, it would be a bit disappointing to find yourself viewing conventional analog gauges uh, through this three-spoke wheel here. And of course, those have been consigned to history. Instead, all models get this 12.3-inch digital instrument panel, a 2D display rather than the 3D version that's found in the S-Class, but it's one that's bright and vibrant with rich graphics. There are many display possibilities with twin virtual dials in the classic and the understated layouts and a single more complicated and rather ostentatious gauge if you select red themed sport. You can also have full screen navigation mapping or a driving assistance display, uh, both with the digital speedo. The ambient lighting also changes according to the theme that's been selected or it can be adjusted to an almost infinite degree using the central screen. Here we have a head-up display too, although you'll only get that with pricey top-spec premium plus trim. In its augmented reality setting, this can project so much information onto the windshield in front of you that it can become distracting, so it is fortunate that there are also less cluttered, standard and minimal head-up options, plus coloured sport and eco-display ones. One thing that you're going to find fiddly at first, but which you'll have to get used to, are these tiny touch-sensitive steering wheel buttons arranged across two bars on either side, running horizontally and parallel to one another. Uh, there is sound logic behind this because it allows related controls to be grouped together. You operate the two screens with upper left and upper right buttons. You deal with the adaptive cruise control on the lower left spoke and with the volume, phone and voice commands on the lower right. The standard leather seats are properly supportive. They feature standard heating and lumbar support. Uh, they are, of course, electrically operated further up the range, and they don't have to be had in dual black, as you can see here. Uh, sadly, though, for our market, they can't be had with S-Class-like uh, super luxurious uh, quilted upholstery. Getting comfortable is very easy, thanks to a wide range of adjustment, which also extends to the steering wheel. This has a power-operated column on plusher variants. As we said, the trimming is lovely. We've got anthracite line structure, lime wood inlays here, but closer inspection reveals that there are plenty of hard, brittle plastics to be found too, such as on the edge of the centre console and above the window switches. Uh, that super wide screen also means that the footwells feel narrower than in most cars in the class, and the silver centre air vents can reflect on the inside of the windscreen under certain conditions, and that can be a bit distracting. Not everyone likes this spindly gear selector stalk either. And your over-the-shoulder view is somewhat compromised on this saloon by the rear headrests and by the shallow rear window. None of it, though, is enough to really dilute this cabin's overall want-one factor. 
Mercedes even gets most of the practical stuff right. Those concave door cards allow for front door bins that are long and deep, meaning they can easily accommodate a large 1.5 litre bottle. And there's also a good sized twin lidded storage box between the seats with a couple of USB ports, although they are of the USB-C variety, so you'll probably need the unsightly converter leads. Ahead of that, there's a smart lidded area concealing a couple of cup holders, another USB-C port, and the standard wireless charging mat. Uh, there are the usual ticket clips and the sun visors too. Not everything's great though, an overhead sunglasses compartment, that's been forgotten. Uh, the glove box is mainly taken up by the owner's manual and there's no extra storage space behind this portrait screen of the sort that you would get from other brands using this style of design. Okay, let's take a look at the rear seat, which offered rather cramped quarters in the previous generation model, and that's presumably why Mercedes has extended the wheelbase by 25 millimeters this time around. Well, the result is an improvement in cabin space, but not as much as we'd hoped. Uh, stats say that legroom is up by 21 millimeters, elbow room by 15 mils, and headroom by about 12, but you'll still feel more comfortable in, say, an Audi A4. As usual in this class, it's perfectly comfortable for two passengers, unless they're really tall, but a real squash for three, the further impediment here being this prominent transmission tunnel. The high-end trimming theme continues with little touches like these narrow LED strips on the door handle panels and a central armrest with a leading edge button which you press once to get a pen cubby and twice for twin cup holders. There are aeroplane style flappy seat back pockets along with big door bins also big enough to take 1.5 litre water bottles plus the USB-C sockets in the rearmost central storage area can be easily accessed from the back. You get grab handles with coat hooks and reading lights, plus twin central vents, which will be accompanied by this climate control panel if you've stretched to a model with four zone climate control. Uh, if you have to fix child seats, you'll be pleased to find isofix attachments with neat retractable covers. Finally, to the boot, which uh, has this rather pointless remote operation. Uh, surprisingly, there's no gesture option available. Estate models get an easy pack tailgate, which incorporates a retractable luggage cover and a dividing net. Uh, given this Mark V model's length increase, we were surprised to find the cargo area no bigger than before. It's 455 litres in size with the saloon. That's 15 litres less than you'll get in the smaller four-door CLA, and more pertinently, 25 litres less than you'll get in a competing BMW 3 Series. Although it's shorter, the alternative estate body style is still able to up the trunk capacity to 490 litres. That's 30 litres more than before, although for some reason it falls to 455 litres with the C300 estate. Opting for the C300 e PHEV variant affects capacity quite a lot. The saloon capacity falls to 315 litres and with the estate it's 360 litres, although at least there's no longer a step in the boot. Uh, this is a usefully shaped space and there's plenty of room beneath the cargo floor, although that's only because Mercedes doesn't supply a spare wheel. There is though a useful fold-out crate and that's handy for supermarket runs but there's no proper storage area for the charging cables uh, which you need for the PHEV model. They have to live in a bag Velcro to the boot floor. Across the range you get bag hooks on either side, a warning triangle in the inner boot lid and this handy netted area on the left. And there's a 40-20-40 seat back split so that long items can be slid between two rear seated folk. Uh, we really like these useful corner seat back retraction catches too. Activate them in the estate and 1510 litres of capacity can be freed up or 1380 litres in the C300E variant. In a nice touch, if your C-Class has powered front seats, these will automatically move out of the way if you fold the second row and they'll return to their original position when you put the rear bench up again. If you need to move more stuff than the total carriage capacity will allow, uh, official towing figures show that conventional petrol and diesel versions of this C-Class can tow 1,800 kilos. That's the same amount as the previous model. It's not quite on a par with a large SUV, but it should be plenty for hauling even quite a large caravan. C300 
So, to the budget you'll need for this C-Class model. Now, Mercedes has developed a wide range of different body style options based around this design, including a coupe and a cabriolet. But here, we're going to concentrate on the saloon and estate variants that most will be considering, which, respectively, will take 50% and 15% of total C-Class sales. Now, from launch, pricing for the mainstream versions, it was concentrated in the 41 to 53,000 pound bracket with a model for model premium of 1300 pounds for those who want an estate instead of this smart saloon. That's a bit of a step up from before, but do bear in mind that at the bottom of the range, automatic transmission is now mandatory. The lineup kicks off with base sports spec, but to get a full choice of engines, you'll need one of the AMG line trim options. And there are three of those, AMG line, AMG line premium, and as in this case, AMG line premium plus. Now engine wise, most will be looking at either a C200 petrol or the alternative C220D diesel variant. It's £2,000 extra to go from one to the other. Uh, the C300E petrol plug-in hybrid starts from around £45,000. Now you probably need a budget of around £80,000 though for the top Mercedes AMG C63 4Matic Plus. Whichever C-Class variant attracts your attention, you'll have plenty of competing options, many of them offered by Mercedes. This fifth generation C-Class donates all its engineering to the second generation version of the brand's mid-sized GLC SUV. And the company also has a mid-sized EV, the EQC, although that costs quite a lot more. Uh, pricing starts there from around £67,000. A closer Mercedes match for a likely C-Class customer is the CLA, which might be a slightly smaller A-Class based front driven model, but it does have a slightly bigger boot and a swoopier coupe-like styling. It's also around £5,000 cheaper. If you're looking at this four-door C-Class body style, but you could cope with a slightly smaller sedan, then you could look at the A-Class saloon. Uh, that, in comparable form, would save you around £9,000. The alternatives most customers will be considering, though, will be saloon and estate versions of this model's two traditional Teutonic arch rivals, the BMW 3 Series and the Audi A4. Now, depending on your choice between diesel or petrol, the Audi might be comparably priced or save you a few hundred pounds. But either way, a comparable version of the BMW, that would save you between two and three thousand pounds. If the saloon fits the bill, you might also consider the Jaguar XE or the Alfa Romeo Giulia. There's quite a saving to be made by opting for the Jaguar. That's priced from around £30,000, but that's quite an old design now. Uh, the Giulia won't save you that much over this Mercedes, but it is considerably better equipped and it's sportier looking. Now, if you don't care much about sportiness, uh, also worthy of consideration could be the Volvo S60 Saloon and the V60 Estate. They're also similarly priced to this Mercedes, but they're better equipped and they're provided complete with typical Volvo qualities of safety, comfort and space. So the C-Class faces some tough competition, but if you really want a Mercedes and you're shopping in this segment, it's very possible that nothing else will do. If that's the case, then you'll want to know what kind of equipment you'll be getting for your money. Well, Mercedes-Benz has at least been pretty generous with the standard kit this time around. Uh, even lead-in sport trim uh, that provides you with 17-inch five-spoke alloy wheels and LED high-performance headlights with adaptive high beam assist. Uh, there's also lowered agility control suspension with passive selective damping, uh, plus the dynamic select driving mode system too. Uh, there's also cruise control and auto headlamps and wipers and plenty of camera safety. Tech. Uh, we'll be briefing you on that in just a moment. Along with an Urban Guard Thatcham Category 1 alarm. Now, as you mentioned earlier on, automatic transmission is standard too. Inside, like all C-Class models, sport variants offer a 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster display and black leather upholstery with four-way lumbar support and heat for the front chairs. Plus, you get wireless smartphone charging, thermatic automatic climate control and a parking package with a reversing camera. Infotainment's taken care of by a high-resolution 11.9-inch central media display with navigation, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration and the usual Hey Mercedes virtual assistant voice control system. And there's a folding rear backrest for the saloon. 
And of course, there's an app. There's always an app, isn't there? Uh, this one's called Mercedes Me Connect, and it does all the usual vehicle monitoring things like reminding you when a service is due. Uh, plus, it can automatically detect and share with you details on your car's wear and tear items. Uh, in addition, the app gives you a one-touch button for fast accident and breakdown recovery, and it can automatically alert the rescue services in the event of an accident. It can even track your C-Class if it's stolen. It can tell you if it's left a pre-agreed geographical boundary, uh, if you lend it out to someone, and it will tell you where the vehicle is if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it. Uh, earlier on, we mentioned the Urban Guard Alarm. Now, that works via this app, and it monitors the car when it's parked, and it alerts you remotely if it is bumped, if the alarm goes off, or worse, if someone's trying to tow it away. Uh, now your phone will instantly tell you how severe the parking damage is and on which part of the vehicle it occurred. So that's covered base sports spec. As we mentioned earlier, though, nearly all UK C-classes are sold with some kind of AMG line trimming package. Next up is AMG line trim, which relieves you of a further £1,500, but delivers a much sportier look, courtesy of larger 18-inch AMG alloy wheels, bespoke AMG bumpers, visible twin exhaust pipes, a radiator grille with chromed pins, and rear privacy glass. There's also sport suspension, sharper sports direct steer steering and larger brake discs. Interior upgrades include a dashboard in Artico man-made leather, metal weave trim, a multifunction AMG sports steering wheel finished in Nappa leather, plus AMG floor mats and brushed stainless steel sports pedals. If you want to go further, the AMG line premium equipment line features grey painted 19 inch AMG multi-spoke alloy wheels, super high resolution headlights with adaptive high beam assist and a digital light feature which projects guidelines, symbols and animations onto the road in front of you as you drive. Other AMG line premium features include ambient lighting with monochrome and multicolour shade options, uh, illuminated door sills, keyless go comfort access, MBUX augmented reality for the navigation and a 360 degree surround view camera. At this level, your C-Class will also feature powered front seat and steering column adjustment with memory settings and active parking assist, which can detect free parking spaces and marked parking spaces and then steer the car into them while the driver just operates the accelerator and the brake. Here we've got top AMG line premium plus trim that's set apart by black painted 19 inch AMG five double spoke alloy wheels and a twin panel panoramic glass sunroof. Inside AMG line premium plus spec gives you a head up display, anthracite line structure lime wood trim and Thermatronic four zone automatic climate control with four climate zones. What about options? Well, there aren't many. Unless you want your C-Class finished in solid polar white, you'll have to pay for metallic paint or one of the pricier and fancier manufacturer metallic shades. If you don't like the standard black leather upholstery, there's a no-cost option of changing the colour to Sienna Brown or Macchiato Beige with base sports spec or to Sienna Brown or Bright Power Red with the various AMG line trim levels. What else? Well, if you tow, there's an electrically deployable tow bar, although for some reason this is only available on estate models in AMG Line Premium or AMG Line Premium Plus form. The tow bar includes trailer stability assist, which uses the stability control system to control trailer oscillations or snaking. If necessary, it also reduces engine torque and breaks the wheels. As for practical accessories, well, there's a boot stowage crate, uh, there's Isofix child seats, a cool box, floor mats, a reversible mat for the load space on estate models, and a carbon-style rear spoiler for saloon models. Enough with that, let's switch to safety now, which down the years has always been a primary consideration for Mercedes with this car. All the key features you'd expect are present and correct. There's active brake assist with turning manoeuvre function. That's an autonomous braking system, which also automatically applies the brakes if you inadvertently turn in front of another vehicle. Uh, active lane keeping assist, that's also standard, and that's there to apply gentle steering pressure to help ensure the car doesn't wander out of its line. And you get 
Active Blind Spot Assist 2, which lets the driver know if a vehicle is in the blind spot. Plus, there's Attention Assist, which provides alerts to prevent long journey fatigue. Should a collision occur, there's a full suite of airbags, and we do mean a full suite. Besides the usual front, front side, and full-length curtain bags, there are side bags in the front seats, pelvis and window bags for all occupants, a knee airbag for the driver, and rather more unusually, a front centre airbag between the driver and the front passenger seats. Uh, there's also an active bonnet, which rises in the event of an impact with a pedestrian to reduce the risk of injury. In the rear, as you'd expect, there are two Isofix charge seat attachment points with top tether attachments. If you want more in terms of camera safety kit, you'll only be offered the chance to specify it if you stretched all the way to the top of the range and got yourself this AMG Line Premium Plus model. Uh, should that be the case, you'll be offered the opportunity to find £1,700 more for the Driving Assistant Package Plus pack. Uh, we've got that package fitted here and it includes a range of key extra camera safety elements, amongst which are features which also give this car some limited autonomous driving capability. So let's talk you through it all now. The Driving Assistance Package Plus Pack menu starts with Active Blind Spot Assist, which actively steers you back to safety if you're about to pull out in front of another vehicle. There's Braking Stuff 2, of course, uh, Active Brake Assist with specific protection to avoid bikes and pedestrians. And there's also Active Emergency Stop Assist, and this initiates immediate emergency braking if evasion is impossible. Uh, there is also an evasive steering assist, which can support you in making evasive manoeuvres if a pedestrian or a cyclist suddenly appears in your path. Plus, a clever route-based speed adaptation feature has an end-of-traffic-jam function, and that works with GPS data to automatically adapt your speed before curves, roundabouts and junctions. There's also pre-safe impulse side, which better prepares the cabin for a heavy side impact using inflatable bolsters inside the seats. It puts more space between those inside the car and whatever might be just about to smash into it. A C-Class with the Driving Assistance Package Plus pack can also provide warnings of red lights, stop signs, pedestrian crossings and no entry restrictions. And it'll feature an upgraded traffic sign assist system which can recognise signs and instructions on overhead gantries as well as conventionally posted speed limits. Active Lane Change Assist will see the car automatically change lanes with just a nudge on the indicator. And in addition, the pack also includes an emergency corridor function along with an extended automatic restart function for motorways and junctions to specifically protect you during turning, cornering and cross-traffic manoeuvres. Uh, there is also an exit warning function and that will alert an occupant if their hands move towards the door handle when traffic is uh, dangerously approaching from behind. The menu of features with the Driving Assistance Package Plus pack doesn't end there either. As mentioned earlier, this pack also includes limited autonomous driving capability to suit the mood of the moment. That comes courtesy of the pack's Active Distance Assist Distronic system. This is designed to operate on a dual carriageway and it works with the Mercedes Active Steering Assist setup which keeps you in the centre of your designated lane and will, if necessary, uh, apply subtle steering correction to ease you back to where you ought to be. Uh, the Distronic feature, that is basically a super advanced adaptive cruise control, which automatically regulates your distance to the car in front and can, if necessary, remotely slow the car with up to 50% of stopping power. It also works the active speed limit assist feature, which automatically sets the cruise control to speed limit signs as you pass them. It's all very reassuring. The last time we tested a C-Class, uh, that was the updated version of the fourth generation model in 2018. Uh, this Mercedes was some way off its Audi A4 and BMW 3 Series rivals when it came to matters of efficiency. That had to change, hence the decision that for this Mark V model, all the engines should be in some way electrified and none of them should be larger than four cylinders in size. Uh, the Mercedes-AMG Formula One team got involved 
heads were scratched in Stuttgart and the midnight oil was burnt in the engineering workshops. To achieve what? Well, parity as it turns out. Uh, we'll quote WLTP figures for the saloon body style here. Obviously the slightly weightier estate body shape will be a bit less brutal. Thanks to the addition of the 48 volt mild hybrid system, uh, the version of that car that most customers will choose, the C220D diesel, delivers efficiency returns which are virtually identical to a comparable BMW 320D. That surely can't be a coincidence. Uh, the C220D saloon's 60.1 mpg combined cycle fuel figure is an exact match and the 120 grams per kilometre CO2 reading only a notch different. But at least this showing now has taken this C-Class well clear of its other arch rival, the Audi A4. There, even the much feebler 163 PS uh, 30 TDI version of that car can only manage bests of 53.3 miles per gallon and 138 grams per kilometre. The petrol engine returns are pretty close to those of a 3 Series 2. Uh, the 1.5 litre C200 manages bests of 42.2 mpg and 146 grams per kilometre. For a BMW 320i saloon, it's 44.1 mpg and 145 grams per kilometre. A comparably performing Audi A4 40 TFSI matches the C200's fuel figure, but its crucial CO2 reading is quite a lot higher at 153 grams per kilometre. For the C300, the best figures are 40.9 mpg and 152 grams per kilometre. That might make you want to take a look at the alternative uh, C300D diesel variant that we're trying here. And that improves the showing substantially to 54.3 miles per gallon and 133 grams per kilometre. So Mercedes has made a step forward here, if not quite as much of a step forward as the engineers might have hoped. Uh, the mild hybrid EQ boost system fitted to those engines works as mild hybrid setups usually do. It uses a belt driven starter generator running off a 48 volt electrical system. Uh, the electrical element is certainly seamlessly integrated. Uh, it cuts in and shuts down the engine uh, completely at cruising speeds and that will often see you burning absolutely no fuel at all. Plus the EQ boost technology allows for a greater level of kinetic energy regeneration. And that's something that you can monitor as you drive via an EQ Boost power charge meter in the instrument cluster here. As a result of all this, uh, driving range from the 66 litre fuel tank has risen to around 890 miles for a C220D. It'd be around 600 miles for a C300 petrol model. Ultimately though, as we continually remark in these tests, uh, mild hybrid tech is a bit of a stopgap and it's nothing like as effective as a kind of full self-charging hybrid system that Mercedes doesn't have. What it does have though is class-leading plug-in hybrid technology, which here sets fresh PHEV driving range standards thanks to the adoption of a much larger 25.5 kilowatt hour battery. It was 13.5 kilowatt hours in size previously. And as a result, the previous generation C300E model's best possible 30 mile EV range figure has been raised to a best of 68 miles at 65 for the estate. Now, in our experience, you can shave around 20% off that prediction in real world driving, but it's still pretty impressive. So, a big step forward in PHEV tech has clearly been made, and that's also been reflected in the efficiency stats. Uh, the C300E's combined cycle fuel figure has leapt to a heady height of 403.6 mpg. Yep, you heard that right. No, that's not realistic. Yes, as usual with a PHEV, if you keep it plugged in, you can expect to match the returns of a frugally driven diesel model in conventional motoring. The C300E CO2 stat is dramatically better too, just 13 grams per kilometre. That's way better than before and this time the figure is useful because that of course is what company car drivers benefiting kind taxation will be based on. Uh, which is why a C300E has a BIK rating of just 7%. Compare that to the 28% rating of the C220D. For reference, a comparable BMW 330e plug-in, which has a best CO2 stat of 30 grams per kilometre, is rated at 11%. There's a gutsier AC 11 kilowatt, DC 55 kilowatt onboard charger for the C300e this time around. And charging time for the C300e has improved too. Uh, the AC time from 10 to 100% is two hours, 
with a DC charging source, it's just 20 minutes, you can see why diesel drivers are switching. Although, if Mercedes imports its latest C300DE plug-in diesel variant, then they may not have to. A decision on selling that version in the UK hadn't been reached at the time of this test in early 2022. A PHEV C-Class that we definitely will get is the stonking Mercedes-AMG C63 4Matic Plus flagship model. Even that can offer an all-electric range of around 40 miles and a combined fuel figure of 93.9 miles per gallon. The latest plug-in C models also benefit from an adjustable energy recuperation system which can top up the battery at up to 100 kilowatts when cruising or decelerating. And Mercedes has added in a hybrid specific route planning function which uses the navigation, the route topography and traffic data to work out the most efficient route, enabling for example automatic prioritization of the electric motor in town driving. Whichever variant you choose, there are various driving aids to help you to maximize frugality. Uh, you'll obviously need to keep this car in its eco dynamic select driving mode uh, to get the best possible figures here. Beyond that, the info part of the center screen has a consumption section which graphically shows recent economy over the last seven and a half, 30 or 90 minutes. And the vehicle section too, which shows the percentage of accelerator or brake that you're using at any given time. If your C-Class has a head-up display, there's an eco display option for that, which uses a red and green ball and a row of stars to show the frugality of your driving. Depreciation-wise, things look pretty good for this C-Class. Uh, the experts at CAT predict it should retain around 50% of its value over the standard three years and 36,000 miles, and that's a distinct improvement over the previous generation model. What else might you need to know? Um, well, uh, every Mercedes-Benz comes with a three-year unlimited mileage warranty. Uh, that's against manufacturing or material defects and up to 30 years warranty against perforation due to corrosion. Uh, the brand also offers pan-European Mercedes-Benz roadside assistance and that's free for the first three years and thereafter it's automatically renewed for 12 months every time the car undergoes a full Mercedes recommended service until the car is 30 years old. Service intervals for the C-Class will depend on how far you drive and under what conditions, uh, but Mercedes does offer service care, which allows you to spread your bills into manageable payments. Uh, that guarantees the price of parts and labor for up to four services, and it covers the cost of uh, recommended service items like brake fluid, uh, spark plugs, air filters, fuel filters, and screen wash. In terms of insurance, uh, the C-Class is on the pricier side. The C200 is rated between 38p and 40p. For the C300, it's 40 to 41p. For the C220D diesel, it's 39p to 41p. For this C300D, it's 41p to 43p. For the C300E petrol PHEV, it's 45p to 47p. Uh, these groups are way higher than those for an equivalent BMW 3 Series. A 320i is rated from Group 28 and a 320d from Group 30. So that's all good to know. There's the potential for quite a shift here in the segment hierarchy for mid-sized premium badged saloons and estates. To be frank, in its previous guises, the C-Class was a car you usually chose more because it was a Mercedes rather than because it was intrinsically better than its Audi A4 and BMW 3 Series arch rivals. But this fifth generation C-Class could potentially tempt you on grounds other than mere badge equity. This is a good looking car, but the cabin's the real draw here, offering an upmarket ambiance which is now on another level from obvious rivals. This is the segment's classiest and most sophisticated interior, and it's one that'll make you feel genuinely special every time you step inside. There's lots of screen tech to get to grips with, of course, but once you do, it all works brilliantly with intuitive and personalizable systems, which used to be the preserve of cars from the class above. The C-Class has always led in democratizing luxury, and it still does. Where it's usually lagged behind its most obvious BMW 3 Series rival, though, is in the need for an engaging standard of drive dynamics, something that Mercedes has set out to change here with some success. 
Enthusiasts will still choose the Bavarian alternative, but this sea is now better to drive than it's ever been, and it's well clear in this regard of its other arch rival, the Audi A4. Unfortunately, in pursuit of this goal, Mercedes has lost sight of a bigger priority, preserving the really supple standard of ride which many more loyal C-Class customers value more highly. With UK sports suspension fitted, it's simply not as good in this regard as it should be. And it would be such an easy thing to fix with the alternative of a comfort-based passive suspension system and the option of adaptive damping. In our view, the British importer needs to fix this issue and quickly. Provided you don't mind the premium pricing, and it's even more premium this time around, uh, there's not much else to object to here. Refinement is superb and equipment levels are much improved. We would still like to see more rear seat space and it is disappointing that the bigger body shell hasn't released more boot capacity. But it is good to see that the mild hybrid tech has brought the efficiency figures onto a par with the class leading 3 series. And the C300E plug-in versions range and efficiency stats put that variant in a league of its own if you want a PHEV in this segment. In summary, it used to be easy to pigeonhole buyers amongst the three main protagonists in the sector, a 3 Series for the driving enthusiast, an A4 for the technophile, and a C-Class as a compromise, bad equity choice. This Mercedes is now a great deal more than that though. It blurs those boundaries. And it makes your choice in this segment just that little bit more pleasantly difficult. <laughs>